Good afternoon, everyone. It is time for me to fess up a little bit. I played a little joke on my Instagram followers. Let's talk about what I did. <laughs> Something that I love about Norfolk is how active the fishing community is. It does not have a terribly active kayaking community, but the fishing community is something. Uh, and like these chairs are left here because there are always fisher people here. Uh, and I'm amazed that there is no one here today because it is really a beautiful day. I mean, it is midweek, but it is a really beautiful day. I think Norfolk is trying to build a paddling community. Uh, as you can see, there are kayak launches right here that are seldom used, uh, but super nice that they're making an effort. All right, let's talk about what I did. Okay, so here's what I did. I posted a photo of me paddling with a poll over it on Instagram. And the question that I asked in the poll was this. Kayakers, when you're paddling, do you think in miles per hour or kilometers per hour? And then on the bottom I wrote, for other, leave a comment below. This poll got 5,000 views and it got uh, a couple of hundred responses. And it was a little bit of a trick. I gave people two options and both of those options were wrong. The correct answer, with an asterisk, because everything's got to have an asterisk, the correct answer is knots. You should be thinking in knots, and I'll get into why in just a second. The actual responses were 159 people said miles per hour, 36 people said kilometers per hour, uh, and then one in, in the comments below, an additional one for each of those groups. So one person left in the comments, kilometers per hour. There was then some debate about the appropriate abbreviation for kilometers per hour, which I thought was KPH, which is what I put on the poll. Apparently that's wrong. I forget what it is, but I'll put what the right one is up here because uh, I live in the United States and we don't really use kilometers per hour. And then there were six people that down below said either knots or nautical miles per hour, which are the same thing. One person said it depends, sometimes knots, sometimes miles per hour, and that is actually the really right answer. Uh, okay, so the asterisk. Yes, of course, you can use whatever works best for you and your brain. If you wanna think in miles per hour, think in miles per hour. If you wanna think in knots, think in knots. If you wanna think in kilometers per hour, think in kilometers per hour, that's fine, I don't care, but there are definite benefits to working in nautical miles per hour or knots. And let's talk about that. Okay, so I am spending my evenings lately uh, working on another book, and this book is a sea kayak navigation book. I, I don't like the navigation books that are out there, even the ones that are sea, sea kayak specific. I think a lot of the skills are not suitable or practical for use while you're in a kayak. So I'm writing a book um, and that has me realizing that what I've done over the years is sometimes I use topographical maps, sometimes I use charts. Uh, charts are designed for use by ships on water and have a great deal of information about what's going on in the water, but not a lot of information about what's going on on land, a little bit, but not much. Maps or topographical maps have a lot of information about what's going on on land, but not a lot of information about what's going on on the water. I would actually really like it if some company came out with with maps that were both, that had both all the water data and all of the land data at once, because it would be great for us paddlers is it would give us both. So there are times when one is better in, than the other. And in fact, when I paddled the Inside Passage, we had both charts and topographical maps of the whole route. Okay, so if you're working on charts, which I think is what most sea kayakers do, there is a definite benefit to using knots. And the benefit is this. One knot is one nautical mile per hour. A nautical mile is slightly longer than a statute mile. Nautical miles are what's used on charts, but it gets better than that. 
every chart and or map on the bottom of the chart or map will have a scale showing you how long a mile is or a statute mile or a nautical mile or even a kilometer if that's what the scale is in. Some will list more than one, but charts generally list nautical miles and most of the charts I use I've noticed will list yards. I feel like I've seen meters as well, but most will list yards, at least in my experience. The charts are using nautical miles but there's a deeper reason for that. The grid on a chart is in latitude and longitude, right? So latitude are the lines that run across the chart like this, like the rungs of a ladder, latitude, whereas longitude lines run vertically from pole to pole. Versus topographical maps will use latitude and longitude, but will also use uh, UTM or something like that. One degree of latitude is made up of 60 minutes of latitude. And so latitude goes in degrees, minutes, seconds, and 60 minutes of latitude equals one degree. One minute of latitude is also one nautical mile. And so it makes navigation super easy um, in terms of, you know, if you've traveled a mile, exactly what percentage of a degree you've traveled. You can also then take whatever your measuring device is and instead of going down to the scale, take it over to the side of the chart and use the latitude indicators. It just makes things and math very easy. Now, I will not gloss over the fact that degrees, minutes, seconds makes absolutely no sense. Your digital devices, and we'll get to digital devices in more detail in a second, your digital devices sometimes will not list them in degrees, minutes, and seconds. It'll list it as degrees point a number, which is a pain in the butt. Sometimes they'll list it as north and west for me in this part of the world. Sometimes it is just a degree and then a negative number for west, which I dealt with this morning for a trip I'm planning, and it's crazy. I totally get that a lot of people don't like latitude and longitude, but if you're working on a chart, you should be thinking in knots. Wait, there's more. I never actually get to sit in the passenger seat looking forward. It's actually kind of nice here. Okay, so another reason you should be thinking in knots is this. As a sea kayaker or a touring kayaker, and really those terms are interchangeable, if you are paddling distances saying, I want to get from point A to point B, there are two things that you should be thinking about and trying to get into your head. The first is, how fast am I going? Uh, in terms of knots or miles per hour, you should develop a sense for how much distance you're covering over how much time. And this takes practice. And in the beginning, I think it's a good idea to do it with some sort of device to tell you how fast you're going to get a feel for it. But then after that, I think that you need to work on developing that skill on your own uh, without the aid of a device. The other part of that is you should get a feel for the amount of distance that you're covering. And both of those things you can really only do with practice. And so I've talked about why it's good to think in terms of knots and nautical miles if you're working on a chart. You should pick one unit of measure and work on developing that as the unit you think in. Since we are boats on the water, primarily using charts, we should be thinking in knots. So someone is gonna say in the comments, the heck with that, I think in miles per hour. Miles per hour is how my brain works. Why would I think in knots? You do you. Uh, I think there are absolute benefits to sort of building up that skill for long term. I know where I am, I know how fast I'm going, I know how much land I'm covering. Oh, and it all makes sense on the chart. But as I said, you do you. Okay, so I am a little bit old school in that I use a handheld GPS. This one is pretty old. This one is pushing 12 or 13 years old. This is a Garmin Dakota 20, and you can't see it because it's, it's too reflective of a screen, but I can simply select uh, uh, units of measure for distance and speed. And so I have it set to nautical, which makes perfect sense, giving me nautical miles and knots, which I really like. I also have a Garmin Instinct, and you can set the units for distance to miles or kilometers. There is no option for nautical miles, despite the fact that there are widgets for water-based sports. I've been told by people, 
that this problem gets even worse on the Garmin Phoenixes because that does have an actual unit system for measurement in nautical. Uh, and it was one of the first things that I checked when the original Garmin Phoenix was released because I was like, this watch was meant for me if it has nautical. I've talked to a number of people who own Garmin Phoenixes of varying ages, and they say that even though they put it in nautical and then use a widget for a nautical-based activity, be it stand-up paddleboarding or kayaking or something, it won't actually tell them nautical miles per hour or knots. Um, I'm sure there is some workaround to this, but it shouldn't be that hard. And that is sort of the problem in the digital realm is that we don't get great support from Garmin. A while ago, I posted, how about a watch with real kayaking features? Uh, and I actually got a response from Garmin and said, how about seven watches with, ki with, with kayaking features? And I was like, how about real kayaking features? And that's my point is that they have these widgets for the watches that are designed to do kayaking or stand up paddleboarding or sailing or whatever but none of them will actually do knots. And that is super frustrating to me. They certainly don't have a feature that I have asked for for a long time, which is I want the ability to track two waypoints at once. And the reason for that is open water crossings. I would like to be able to know my distance from the start of the crossing and the end of the crossing at the same time without having to switch the waypoint that I'm tracking in the middle of a crossing. That should be easy to do, but I'm not getting that information from them. Okay, so that's my pitch to use knots while you're paddling, knots and nautical miles while you're paddling. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of kickback in the comments. Have at it. Um, but I think it's better for you, particularly for the kind of paddler that is using charts and navigating and trying to cover distances on a trip and getting from point A to point B. It is a way better world to live in uh, latitude and longitude and nautical miles and knots. Okay. If you're digging this content, do me a favor, hit like and hit subscribe. You can buy me a cup of coffee on coffee. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you on the water. Again, okay, let's angle a little bit left. Right about there, according to my GPS, which I'm not sure I trust.